when we describe Welcome motion to the in terms down of, of say, this is total displacement of three, four, four velocity, average acceleration, study one motion. we're not giving and a today we're going to be giving, giving a summary of graphs, which but is just a fancy no way, way of saying uh, motion times. Most journeys are going to involve a speed change. So it's often very useful to us uh, over short periods of time to, to graph it in uh, terms of either position versus time or the velocity versus time. We can do acceleration and force, but we'll get to those at uh, a later point. So by describing it like this, often it's useful for us to estimate values such as uh, the displacement or the velocity or acceleration at any instant during a journey. Now there are a number of things that these graphs can tell us. Uh, so I'm going to quickly just shoot through in point form what we can get, the information we can draw from a position time graph. So on a position time graph we would put uh, the position on the y-axis, that's the dependent variable, and time across the x-axis which is our independent variable. Now the things that we can draw from this Firstly is the position at any given time, we just read it off, we find the time, we go up and then we go across to our vertical axis and we read off the time. We can also find the time that it would be at any given position. Again, this is read directly from the graph, so find the position, go across and see where it cuts across our graph. So we can similarly find the displacement over a given time interval and effectively you're just finding the final displacement, finding the initial displacement from the graph and then finding the difference between the two. We can find when the object is stationary. Now when we think about that, if it's stationary there's no change in its position. If there's no change that means that the graph must have a horizontal section. So whenever it's horizontal it means the object's not moving we can determine when it's moving in a positive or a negative direction. And that's simply just by looking at the sign of the gradients. Now if it's got a positive gradient, then it's moving in the positive direction. Negative gradient, then it's going backwards and therefore it's uh, got a negative velocity. Now the positive negative will need to be defined, say, you know, picking north as positive, south as negative, something to that effect. So it'll be defined within the question what positive and negative means, but we'll talk more about that in an example. Now we can tell when it's moving with constant velocity, and that's because it's got a straight line. So constant gradient means it's the same amount of displacement every unit of time. So therefore we're moving at constant velocity. Yeah, we can also determine an average velocity for across a, a particular time. To do that you've got one of two options. You can either draw in a line between the two points and find the gradient of that line. That will give you your average velocity. Or you could do the calculation. You could do final displacement minus the initial displacement and divide by the time interval, which is really what you're doing when you find the do that gradient calculation anyway. So you can draw the line in and find it that way or you calculation. Either way, both work. The other thing we can be finding is magnitude and direction of a constant velocity. And again, this is just what I was talking about before. Um, straight line section, find the gradient that uh, that will actually give you the value of. You can find when, if it's not a constant velocity, then it's obviously going to be accelerating. And the giveaway for this is that the graph has a curve in it. So that it's stepping out different amounts of displacement over the amount of time. Now, if it's accelerating or it's not under constant velocity, you can find the instantaneous velocity at any given point by drawing in a tangent to that point and then you find the gradient of that tangent. So let's have a look at some of these things in terms of an example. So we're given a displacement time graph, we've got a time of 14 seconds and moving up to a maximum displacement of 10 in the positive direction and minus 5 in the negative direction. So if we define north as positive, this would be an area where it is north of its starting point. Still north, it's moving back, it actually gets back to where it started, and then it moves south of that point. Still south, and then it starts moving north, positive gradient, moving north, 
and it gets back to its starting point after 14 seconds. So let's have a look at a couple of questions um, relating to the graph. So first question, what was the position of the car after 8 seconds? We look at the 8 second mark, go back to the graph, well it's actually back at the origin or the starting point in this case. When was the car travelling the fastest? Well we need to look at the gradient. Here the gradient is 10 on 4, here the gradient is 10 on 2, so it's travelling twice as fast, it's in the negative direction or the south direction. Um, and here it's 5 over 2. So the gradient here is equal to here, but it's actually twice as fast here but in the negative direction. When was the car travelling with a positive velocity? So from 0 up to 4 seconds and from 12 to 14 seconds, it's got the positive gradient, therefore a positive velocity. What was the velocity of the car between 4 and 6 seconds? Between 4 and 6 it's actually horizontal. Horizontal was an indication of no change of displacement and therefore it's stationary at that point in time. Between 6 and 8 seconds, okay, well I briefly mentioned that before, we've got displacement of 0 minus 10 over 8 minus 6, so negative 10 on 2, that's negative 5 meters per second. What was the velocity of the car between 8 and 9 seconds? So from 8 to 9, the velocity was exactly the same. The gradient hasn't changed, so it's still minus 5 meters per second. You'll notice here that there's no curves in the graph, so there's no acceleration at any given point. Okay. The other type of graph that we commonly use is a velocity time graph. So this is where velocity is the dependent variable, it's on the vertical axis, and we've got time on the horizontal axis. They look really similar, so you've got to be very careful when it comes to answering the questions. And really we're doing very similar calculations, but they tell us something that's completely different. So first thing obviously is it can tell us the velocity at any given time and it can tell us what time the object travelled at any given velocity. Both of these are things that we read directly from the graph. Either start from the time, work up and read the velocity off or start at a velocity, go across and see at what time or multiple times it could cut across and then read the times off. The third thing is we can work out when it is traveling with constant velocity. Okay, so unlike the displacement time graph when it was horizontal it told us it was stationary, that's because the displacement was constant. In this case where it's horizontal it's actually moving at the same velocity the entire time. It can tell us when an object's stationary but not obviously when it's horizontal this is when it touches the time axis. So at any point that it's touching the time axis, it's going to be stationary because remember the, the vertical axis is now velocity. So when the vertical axis is zero, that means it's not moving. We can tell whether it's moving in a positive or a negative direction. In this instance, when it's above the graph, the velocity is positive. So that means that it's moving um, in a positive direction. When it's below the axis, the velocity is negative, so it's moving in the opposite direction. Now, we can actually do a displacement calculation over a given time interval. Now, displacement is velocity times time. So to do that, what you're actually doing is you're looking at the area under the graph, because area going up or velocity going up, time going across, we multiply the two together and that's what's going to calculate the area. So that'll give us a, a reading of the displacement. If the area is above the time axis, it's a positive displacement. If it's below the axis, we have a negative displacement, it's moving backwards. Now if we have a calculation that's got both of these, then the simplest thing to do is calculate the positive uh, area above 
and subtract the negative area below. Now using the displacement that we've just calculated, we can find the average velocity between uh, for, a, for a given time interval. So you know the displacement, the total displacement over that time. Now divide it by how long it took to make that displacement. That will give you your average velocity. We can determine when it's got constant acceleration because that's where we get a straight graph. Uh, there's a constant change in the velocity. We can work out the average acceleration over a given time and that's by calculating the difference in velocity. So it's the change in velocity over time. That's our acceleration equation. So we work out our average velocities. Or our average acceleration. Tongue tied. Our average acceleration by the difference in velocities over time. Okay, or like I mentioned before when we were doing it on the displacement time graph, find the gradient between two points. Where it's going undergoing constant acceleration, direction and magnitude is simply the gradient of the straight line. And if there's a changing acceleration that's indicated by a curve in the graph. You could find the instantaneous um, acceleration at any point by drawing a tangent at that time. So let's have a look now at some questions uh, around a particular velocity time graph. Okay, so we here, see here there's no curves anywhere, so it's only constant acceleration and um, we've got horizontal components. Here it's moving at constant velocity, accelerating positive direction. Now it's slowing down. Hit the time axis. So at this point here, it's actually stationary. Then it accelerates in a negative direction, constant velocity for a couple of sections, then slows back down to a stop at the 18 second mark. So let's work through some questions. So firstly, describe the motion over the first four seconds. Well, we did that before. Three meters per second in a positive direction. Okay, from four to six, it's accelerating in the positive direction. So it accelerates at a rate of, well, it increases by seven over two. So it accelerates at 3.5 meters per second. From nine to 12 seconds. So horizontal, so it's constant and it's zero, so it's actually stationary. What's the displacement after six seconds? Okay, we need to do a calculation of the area. So we've got three high. I'm gonna break this up into a box that comes up there. So I've got three by six, that's 18. Then I've got a triangle, which is a half of, it goes up by seven and across by two. So a half times two times seven is just seven. So we said it was 18 for the big box along the bottom, 7 for the cut-off triangle at the top, 7 and 18, that makes it 25 metres. What's the acceleration of the object at the 5 second mark? Well, we did that in our description. Perhaps they didn't want that. Perhaps they were, they were just questioning, you know, is it accelerating? We've gone ahead and done that. So we said that was 3.5 metres per second squared. What times is the car moving with constant velocity? Well, from the interval zero to four seconds it is. Acceleration, acceleration, stationary. I wouldn't call that moving with constant velocity. And then from 14 to 16 seconds, it moves with constant velocity. When's the object undergoing? Did we just not do that? Constant velocity? Constant velocity. Perhaps that should be constant acceleration. So four to six seconds, six to nine seconds, 12 to 14 seconds, 16 to 18 seconds. Okay, so you can see that the graphs look quite similar and there's a fair bit to get your head around, but you've just got to break it down and think about it. If that's the velocity, change in is acceleration, um, constant or horizontal means it's constantly moving and stationary means it's got zero velocity down here. Um, so we'll do some practice of that in class to help get your 
head around the, the difference of the two graphs. So I'll see you there.